Hi right guys, in this video we're going to look at antibiotics. We're going to first define antibiotics, then talk about the discovery, the uses of antibiotics and how they work, the mechanism of action. Then we're going to look at a problem that we're now facing, antibiotic resistance and the prevention of this resistance. So firstly, what is an antibiotic? Now an antibiotic is something that is produced by a living thing, uh, usually a bacteria or fungi, that is capable of killing and competing with other microbes around it. So here you can see a petri dish. On that petri dish is a whole heap of bacteria and there's little spotting discs there and those spotting discs contain antibiotics. So they'll be like little fungi or something like that and you can see that they're producing an antibiotic and there's a zone of clearing around them where it's inhibiting the growth of bacteria. Alexander Fleming discovered the first antibiotic, penicillin, in 1928. And one story of how he did this was that he was eating a sandwich at his desk one day and some crumbs dropped onto the plates that he was preparing and they grew from that. Um, we all know that we're not allowed to eat in a lab and although uh, Alexander Fleming probably wasn't the neatest guy around, he had a fairly uh, messy office, uh, he would never have eaten at his desk because that's very dangerous. Uh, what actually happened is he didn't clean up some plates and then went on holidays uh, and left the window open and the plates open. Uh, when he came back, he noticed that there was uh, some mould growing on the plates and he was just about to throw those plates into a bucket of bleach to kill them and he noticed that around that mould that was growing there was this zone of clearing where the bacteria that was on the plates was inhibited from growing. Uh, so he then isolated this mould juice which uh, later became called penicillin and took that mould juice and put it on other plates and he showed that it was able to kill bacteria. Now the problem with this mould juice is it was really hard to grow, didn't store uh, and was really hard to work with in the lab. So basically he, uh, after discovering it, put it on ice and went, well, it's too hard, uh, I'll work on something else. It wasn't until 1939 when Howard Florey and Ernest Chan started working with penicillin that they were able to find a way to grow it in quantities where it could actually be harvested and used for both animal and then human trials. And the way that they found to grow this and harvest it was fairly hard work uh, and took up a lot of space. So in the basement at Oxford University they had uh, all these different pots and chains and buckets and stuff growing this penicillin for these trials uh, to the point where the first human trial that they had, which was on a 43-year-old policeman uh, who had an, a bacterial infection in his head, he originally started getting better uh, from taking the penicillin and then halfway through the trial they actually ran out of penicillin that they'd made uh, and had to stop the trial and subsequently he got worse and unfortunately died. The way a drug works in the body is called the mechanism of action and there are a number of different mechanisms of action for antibiotics depending on the class of antibiotics. Some look at the cell wall and the inhibition of the formation of that cell wall, particularly during mitosis. So when the cell has grown to the size where it's about to divide under mitosis, uh, the penicillin gets in there and stops that cell wall from forming, uh, thereby causing that cell to pop. Uh, another way that you can pop a cell is through damage to the cell membrane. Uh, you can also stop that bacteria from working through an interference in protein synthesis, such as erythromycin, which attacks the ribosomes, stopping protein synthesis from occurring and therefore metabolic function to occurring. And another way that antibiotics can work is through the inhibition of the nuclear acid metabolism. So this is talking about DNA and RNA and about the formation, use and replication. So if these things can't happen, the cells can't divide. The way that antibiotics are used are to treat bacterial infections and kill bacteria. This is a really important point because they are only able to kill bacteria. You cannot take antibiotics to kill a virus. Um, so for example, if you've got the flu, taking antibiotics isn't going to help you at all. You just need to get wait till uh, the flu, you combat it yourself within the body. And previously, uh, the people could actually die from minor cuts that became infected. Uh, and I sort of talked before about uh, Flory and Chan's 
uh, first human trial in that 43 year old policeman he actually was in his garden uh, doing some work on the weekend he fell from a ladder and scratched himself on a rose bush and that uh, infection became so bad that he ended up dying from it one of the biggest problems facing us at the moment is antibiotic resistance so having antibiotics in the system places an evolutionary pressure on the population of bacteria and eventually the bacteria mutates and leads to uh, resistance to that particular antibiotic. An example of this is uh, multiple resistance Staphylococcus aureus uh, or uh, resistant golden staph. Uh, this uh, is a bacterial infection generally of the skin, which pretty much all antibiotics are well, don't work on at all. So it's resistant to all these antibiotics. Uh, the only one that MRSA can uh, actually be attacked with is vancomycin, which is a fairly harsh antibiotic to take on the body. Uh, so it's more one of the antibiotics we take for the last resort. And unfortunately, we have also uh, discovered that there are now vancomycin resistant uh, golden staph as well. One of the reasons that uh, antibiotic resistance in bacteria happens so quickly across a population is because bacteria re reproduce very, very quickly. Uh, so it, they're able to pass those resistant uh, bacteria, are able to pass that resistance gene onto its offspring, and quickly this spreads throughout the population. But in addition to this, uh, there's another way that uh, bacteria can pass this gene from one to another, and that's what's called um, horizontal transfer. Uh, meaning that rather than passing from parent to offspring, uh, DNA is actually passed from uh, sorry, horizontal uh, offspring of the same generation. And this can be done in a number of ways uh, through plasmid transfer, where two bacteria rub up against each other and swap a little bit of DNA. Uh, it can be from viral vectors. This picture here is actually a bacteriophage, which is kind of like a virus uh, specifically for uh, bacteria. It happens on a very, very small level, and these, kind of like mosquitoes spreading malaria, can spread that resistant gene. The last way that this can be spread is through free DNA. So when an antibiotic resistant uh, bacteria, uh, it can sort of put its DNA out into whatever it is, uh, the exter uh, external environment, uh, as free DNA and other bacteria sort of come along and hoover up this DNA and can actually uh, put it into their own genome. Uh, so it happens very, very quickly. This antibiotic resistance is a really scary thing that's happening at the world at the moment. And the World Health Organization has actually described it as a major global threat. Uh, the problem is that if all bacteria ends up becoming resistant to all antibiotics. Our antibiotics, which were pretty much a silver bullet for the last close to 100 years, uh, have for killing these bacterial infections, uh, won't work anymore. So we'll go back to 100 years ago where things like scratching yourself on a rose bush can actually lead to your death. So how can we stop this really scary antibiotic resistance? Well, firstly, we don't take antibiotics when they're not necessary. So, for example, if you've got a flu and you happen to have some antibiotics left over in your cupboard, don't think that taking those antibiotics is going to help your flu. Uh, what it will do is put that selective pressure on the bacteria living inside you for no point whatsoever. Another thing is to take the recommended dosage of antibiotics. So rather than if you're told to take two a day, taking one a day, and over a longer period having a lower level, therefore a less selective, uh, a less harsh selective pressure, uh, allowing the bacteria to actually evolve with that, uh, hit them with that high dose uh, as prescribed uh, over and again over the full course of the antibiotics um, and this will kill as many of them as possible straight up. The point of taking the full course of antibiotics rather than just uh, say after three or four, four days into a 10 day course going well I feel better now I'll stop taking them uh, is that it stops with the uh, recommended dose, stops that low level dose causing the resistance. 
In this video, we've talked about antibiotics, which are compounds produced by uh, living, generally, microorganisms that inhibit or kill other microorganisms. We've talked about the discovery by Alexander Fleming, and it's then uh, research by uh, Flory and Chan uh, into and using it for humans. We've talked about how it's can be used for bacterial infections only, not viral infections. Uh, the mechanism of action, and there's a couple of different mechanisms of action depending on the class of antibiotics. We've talked about antibiotic resistance uh, being bacteria that are not affected by the antibiotics uh, due to a mutation that they have and how quickly that mutation can spread through a population and the way that these can be prevented through uh, not taking antibiotics when unnecessary, taking the prescribed dose for the prescribed time. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.